We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we are doing how to heal after entanglement. And on this episode, I have a special guest. As always, the crowd goes wild for the beautiful, the lovely Jennifer Lauren Counseling. Jennifer Arsenault is a licensed psychotherapist that specializes in working with millennials and couples. And she's joining in on this episode. I turned to her for a lot of advice when we're consulting clients at The Spicy Life. She is my go-to marriage and family therapist when it comes to helping people deal with trauma, healing work, and helping push them out of their comfort zone. And one of her main goals is to help people become more comfortable with the concept and idea of therapy and mental health. So welcome to today's episode, Jenny. I'm so happy to have you on. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here, Spicy. (laughs) okay Jenny is not going to be formal with us she is going Ah. to be an open book she's going to let me pick her brain um, and share on this episode because we have a lot of people who are in need of some of this advice right now you deal with a lot of couples and singles as well and as do I that have experienced entanglements and uh, we're going to get into like the spicy dish with what's going on and why I thought this topic was so important. But Will and Jada went to the Red Table Talk to have a discussion about August Alsina and his, uh, I don't want to say accusations, but him uh, saying that he somewhat had a affair with Jada, but that Will was okay. He gave permission. And... Um, Their PR rep put out a statement on their behalf that apparently wasn't accurate, and Will and Jada went to the Red Table Talk to, I guess, make us uh, in on, or put us in on, like, their really current affairs. (laughs) Yeah, to give give us their dish on what is really going down, and along the way... Uh, Jada was starting off a little evasive, not necessarily, like, deep diving in, and Will called her out. And everybody took to Twitter and Instagram, and now entanglement is our word All choice <laughs> for yeah, affairs. Like, <laughs> for affairs, but I wanted to kind of like hear what you thought one about the interview and like what you were picking up on um, when you were watching it. Uh, I felt like it was a like they were being really authentic in that it didn't seem as if they had like planned exactly, you know, what they were going to say. And it was unfolding in front of us. And Jada probably on her own decided that she wanted this to be a prepared, you know, statement of and use wording that was a little evasive timelines that didn't give us any set dates when last time we really spoke a long time ago. Um, But Will, he looked like he was in pain and processing some old wounds Mm -hmm. and that was coming up in little jabs of I'm gonna get you back and I, you know, this this like hint of a revenge, a pending revenge. Um, but it it seemed like a real partnership and a team and that they, you know, they're they're working through it and they're mm-hmm. trying to do the work and they're trying to show up and they're not perfect. Celebrities sometimes get put on this pedestal because they've been able, especially married black couples, you know, because they've been able to make things last, but that does not necessarily mean that things have been easy. And so, yeah, I I thought, I mean, I enjoyed it. (laughs) I think what, what, like, another lesson that we took, too, is, like, to your point right now about marriage not being easy, it's this thing that we say we all want, right, to, uh, through through sickness and health, to death do us part, and when it comes to it, like, really down to it, with the divorce rate being so high, you know, it it goes back and forth every other year between 49% to 50%. Um, yeah. We really see that people don't always, they mean it at the time, but they don't necessarily aren't able to keep their word in regards to the vows that they make. And that they sometimes will, you know, release their partner, um, things don't work out, and maybe aren't able to recover when, you know, things happen in marriages. But what we get to see is this ride or die relationship, and people are going in on the fact that they said, uh, what is it? Bad marriage for life. <laughs> yes, yes. That yeah, that was a little problematic, but I think it was a joke. I mean it was they, totally a joke. That part seemed super rehearsed. Like they've said that before mm-hmm. amongst themselves. So I don't I mean, I hope that was a joke, right? Like I don't uh it, but regardless, you know, neither of them are professionals. You know, Jada, you know, she has a lot of insight and has gone through a lot of healing and growth, but they are not 
out here as the role models for everyone to follow for a marriage. And right. If that, you know, commitment is more important to them than a quality, happy marriage, then that's their decision. Um, you don't have to subscribe to that. Question. Are you saying that you don't think that they have a quality, happy marriage? No, I'm just talking about the phrasing bad marriage for life. Oh, like, okay. Calling your, your, your relationship a bad marriage to me denotes that you think that there is, there's problems there. See, like, and I interpreted it. I interpreted it as them saying, you know, how bad boys for life. I interpreted it them saying when they said bad marriage for life, that like no matter what, when it's good, when it's bad, we're staying together. Like this is a lifelong commitment and they were making joke and poking fun at the fact that they have had bad times. Mm -hmm. So it's like, nope, regardless of like what we've been through, look at our longevity, look at our stamina. I, I see what you're saying. I think that maybe they could have, I mean, obviously it's a joke and it's, you know, it's referencing bad boys, but I think if they would have just said married for life, then they wouldn't have gotten the backlash, right? Like it. it they had to say that bad that we died. To the movie. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I think, you know, people are caught up in semantics and people, you know, are always looking for something to, to criticize people about. And so I don't know if it was a joke for real, but I think that, everyone has to define what a good and bad marriage for themselves and what's worth staying, um, what's worthy of staying or not. Yeah. The entanglement. <laughs> <laughs> and for those, entanglement I know, I like, for those of you who don't know, like, although we're poking fun and it's become like uh, the hashtag of like all times this year for 2020, um, entanglement is a real word that Jada was using. It wasn't like when we first heard it, we were like entanglement. Like it, sa- it sounded like yeah. I had envisioned cords tangled up from my iPhone cord, right? My ear pods. <laughs> but like what entanglement actually is, if you look it up in the dictionary, it's a complicated or compromising relationship or situation. So she did use the word accurately, but knowing that we as an audience may not be familiar with that word and it's often not yeah. used to say affair, or, you know, relationship that you were having, uh, it sounded at the time like she was avoiding saying what it really was. So I do appreciate Mm -hmm. you, you know, calling her out on it. And now, you know, it's our our word of the year. But people at home who maybe don't have the Red Table Talk as a platform or aren't in the public eye or aren't, you know, processing maybe their entanglement, you know, the best way where they can dap it up and say bad marriage for life. You know, I wanted us to discuss how this is, you know, a, a challenge for a lot of relationships and wanted to hear your feedback on, you know, what it takes to recover maybe from it, you know, to heal from Mm it. Um, and also us to discuss like why, what the, what the alternative option is. If you decide that you don't like that's okay as well. But I wanted us to start off with, you know, kind of talking about, you know, why entanglements happen. Like, what's going on in relationships that create entanglements? Yeah. Well, I would never want to, you know, start with the premise that there is a one size fit all reason why someone seeks outside of their relationship for needs to be met or for insecurities to, you know, to attempt to to heal insecurities. But it there, it often does lie within, you know, two causes to me. It's either something, something lacking inside that, you know, there's, you're unfulfilled personally, and that could be something that has nothing to do with their relationship, career, your self-esteem, all these other issues, or there's a, a need being unmet in that relationship. And as a result, you know, of, of a lack, you seek external, mm-hmm. or you seek external connection to try to fill that void. And it's often, you often find that it's unfulfilling and that can result in people seeking to untangle their entanglement, <laughs> right? Oh, and try to, and <laughs> the the episode, how to untangle your entanglement. Jenny, <laughs> give me some bars. Okay. <laughs> And so either and that or it comes in the form of being caught, right? Like, and I think that's what people when they look at, you know, Jada calling it saying, I mean, it sounded as if she was trying to say, like, I got caught up, you know, like like yeah. and play it. And especially when once we heard, oh, some of us have, you know, heard August's version of the relationship and it sounded like this deep love affair. Yeah. Um, you know, there's it's different ways in which your entanglement, which your entanglement process begins, right? You can choose it or you can it can be forced upon you. And um, how it, it really, I think, 
the reason why I, I'm like resistant to, you know, the forgiveness process being automatic is because mm -hmm. the, the person who, who committed, you know, the act, the, the affair or the, the tango. <laughs> tango, yes, who started tango. Um, <laughs> We also, you know, have to be ready for this process too. It's not only on the person forgiving and that, and it, it's, it's a rough road for both parties. And I think that people joke about how Will looked like he was going through it, yeah. but, <laughs> but it, it is, it's, you know, it, it, it is, it is really challenging on both ends and you have to really decide if this relationship is worth saving. If when you separate yourself from whatever was going on before you decided to, to seek outside of that relationship, you look at the strengths that existed there and, and, and decide that, okay, I, I want to get back to that or I want to do something better than that. Then I, you know, I do understand people embarking on that process. Great. I, I completely agree with everything that you just said. I'm of the notion that entanglements happen for three reasons. I do believe that it is to fill a void. Um, I think that it happens and it's not spoken about because the person is being avoidant in addressing sometimes what the problem is in the relationship. And maybe they don't handle conflict resolution to the best of their ability or maybe the way that they process um, is by, you know, seeking outside of their partnership and then another reason is you know unavoidable circumstances you know we want to we want to say that human nature uh we're not meant to be with one person and you know we're we're mammals is that what we are mammals um <laughs> we're supposed to you know we're supposed to breed and you know, but like those are all you know those are three excuses of like what people often you know use and why they're led astray but I really do think that it breaks down to how someone handles times of challenge and problems. Are you someone right. that, you know, fight, flight, you know, how do you, how do, you know, you handle things that are going on with you? And some of us, you know, dive head on and we want to, you know, address it and we seek help immediately. Some mm -hmm. of us are completely avoidant and we don't want to address the issues in our relationship, you know, that's going on whatsoever. And some of us are battling with our own insecurities and unaware that we're even having these issues. We just know we're craving someone else or we have a wandering eye. We don't know why. And we're seeking, you know, to fill that void or whatever is missing or lacking, whether yeah. it comes from our childhood, we're filling it with someone else who makes us feel good. It might not even be what our partner's doing. It, and that phrasing, right, feel good. Yeah, it, they just want to feel good. Said. OMG, when she quoted <laughs> Monster's Ball, I was like, did you really quote Holly? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. And what often times happens is when we enter into a relationship, we have these amazing lovey-dovey feelings and we expect to be entitled to those emotions of good feelings 24-7 the entire time. You know, this is what I signed up for. I signed up for the happiness. But what really happens is the challenges, the heartache, the pain, and whatever that reason may be, we still feel entitled to the good feelings. So if our partner can't then bring it to us, we seek someone else to make us feel good versus maybe investing more time and energy, maybe giving some space, but like having an agreement. Or even doing your own healing. Or doing, yeah, doing your own, your own healing. It may be something independent and I think that those are like alternatives in, that we can be doing instead of trying to feel it and feel good with someone else. Because that person still, even after she had August, I don't think that that healed the relationship. I don't, I think he made no. her feel temporarily good. And then it's like, damn, but now I, now I have to still address the problem in my marriage. Exactly. And, and I think um, you, I agree with everything that you were saying uh, and definitely uh, this idea of, of looking, you know, for a quick solve, right? Um, I think that people are right now really criticizing Jada because they are thinking that, you know, she took advantage of August. He was mm -hmm. in a vulnerable, broken state. But from listening to where she was at, it sounded like while she may not have been in like having the health struggles or the resource struggles um, that he was at, she was in, she was in a vulnerable place too. And she, and when we are, when we're, we're not um, acting out of the full version of ourselves, we do make decisions, uh, you know, lesser decisions. And she seemed as if she was seeking uh, a need to get met from him that wasn't from 
not necessarily a malicious place, but was from a broken place. Yeah. And she still had to, and she, she had to realize that that wasn't going to get mended with, you know, a, with a different relationship outside of herself. And that's what she, she spoke to. And I think that's what a lot of her Red Table Talks kind of speak to of all of these different challenges that she's gone through and she's sought healing and helping help for. I've heard like other uh, relationship experts. I think I just listened to like, um, Derek Jackson's take on what he thought about like the trilogy um or three I'm not gonna call it threesome but like <laughs> the, the, situ- the situation the entanglement and came to the defense of August saying that like he was a victim in this and that um Jada is the you know was predatory for you know taking mm-hmm. advantage of his vulnerability but I wholeheartedly agree with what you're saying they both right energy attracts likeness and so they both were in this same state of wanting healing and mending one another and I don't think that it was predatory I think that they were both feeling voids that they needed in that moment mm-hmm. and sometimes you know we're human like we we do make mistakes but what do we learn from that? How do we grow from that? I think a lot of people think or believe that it is a deal breaker in the, in the marriage or in the relationship if someone steps out on the partnership. And so oftentimes, though, people are upset, they're hurt, but oftentimes they want to stay. They don't want to leave, similar to you know Jade and Will. They're like, no, let's get back to us. And they do leave this third party out there, but that's the third party's risk when you are a third party. And I know that sounds cold hearted, but that is the risk that you take when you enter somebody else's relationship, whether you think that it's done or not, no papers had been signed. They were separated. Yes. But even if they, even if it wasn't Will and Jada and it was another relationship, I would say, is that door fully closed before you enter into this so-called separation because you're up against a love of 20 years that she's been in, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, he, he, I don't, I do, my heart goes out to him, but I don't think he's a victim in this. I think that he probably wanted what he wanted too. And he wanted to fill some needs with her. Agreed. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like to use the word victim in this. Like I think sometimes in predatory, I feel like that sounds as if he, he was younger, but mm-hmm. he was age and she was separated and also you know they it, it it seems as if maybe some people had some misconceptions about his role in it and they really did this to help clear his name and so which yeah. they did so i don't i i don't want to call him a victim but it it seems like he did take some measures to protect himself when when it was too much because she said that he cut off you know the communication with the family and so if they were trying to maybe you know have some new version of connection he wasn't here for it. And I think that that shows some strength and it shows that he- Good for him. Position, yeah, to, to make the right decision to you know, cut off uh, his tangle. <laughs> he, had, he had to save himself, right? He had to take his power yeah. back. He, he, and I think he realized like, oh, you guys are gonna get back together. I'm still a third party. I'm maybe potentially mm-hmm. get hurt in this situation. And he had to do what was best for him because they for sure was gonna do what was best for themselves. Exactly. And really, whether or not you're entering, a, you know, you're the third party or you're just in a relationship, there's no guarantees in right. relationships, right? And so Will could have said, no, I'm done. I'm going to leave, you know, I'm going to leave you after this. Like all of us, you know, there's, there's, we're all taking a risk when you, when you love someone. But it sounds like even with the risk that he took, even with him being separated, he still feels like that level of connection and depth was worth it for him. And so it may even be hurtful for people to walk, to be calling him, to, to hear him, uh, to hear people calling him a victim. He may not feel that way. Right. So he's going to be using that label on someone who didn't choose that. Agreed. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I also love the fact that we're pointing light to the fact that, or attention to what happens when a man doesn't make his wife happy. So many times we hear in the media mm-hmm. about these men who you know had the affair Oh, and I love that we get to see a woman who like, yes, look, it happened to me. I own it, um, taking accountability for it. And Mm -hmm. because oftentimes we always hear, you know, men who are demonized as, you know, the person who's cheating or the person who's stepping out on their marriage and not to say that it should be, you know, tit for tat or anything like that. But as women, we do have needs 
And Jada wasn't afraid to get her needs met when Will wasn't capable of providing for them. And they even alluded to the fact that there has been more entanglements. They just haven't been brought to the public eye. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm sure those will come out soon when someone else has an album or a movie that's um, going to premiere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're not airing oh, this dirty laundry if it's not going to be adding value to, to, to our band. <laughs> right. Because that, that's really Will and Jada are about their business. I feel I feel like some of some of it uh, is like they get behind it really quick and they know, you know, how to put their two cents in and how to spin it. So, you know, just like Jay-Z and Beyonce, just like like they use their real life as, you know, content. And I think that that's awesome. Do I think that we get 100 percent? No, but I no. appreciate the no. 60, 70 percent we get. I'll take it because, it you know, we're able to discuss it and it brings further issues to the light. And I think that it was part of, you know, they wanted to clear um, August's name, but I think a part of it was also like, look at the strength that sometimes is required when you do decide that you want to stay together. For sure. And, and I think it also, they had to, they, so they're very transparent online when well, they attempt to be transparent online. I think they, they, they're always talking about healing and growing. And if they didn't, if they shied away from this topic, that would have took away from their credibility on, on their platform. So it was definitely a smart decision, but you're right. We don't know, you know, there was some, some, you know, allusion to Will's own things happening as well. We know Will has done something. Exactly. Like, <laughs> the stats don't lie. Like, the stats don't lie. Like 20% of men have affairs versus 13% of women. And so this is the first time that is being flipped in reverse in the public yeah. eye. And so I know, I mean, in my spirit, I know Will has done something because there, <laughs> when she was like, you're going to get back at me. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Like you haven't already, like it was like that inside joke that they were laughing at that they mm -hmm. didn't clarify, but we knew what they were referring to. Yeah. And, and, but you're right. Yeah. We normally don't get this view of it. It's a very typical story of the one having to deal with this public I don't want to call it shame, but this is public outing of, you know, what happened in her relationship and that her partner sought fulfillment otherwise. Hmm, fulfillment is a strong word. Sought satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Satisfaction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. August was yeah. her vibrator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to oh. I want to help I want to help our folks and give you guys some spicy tips on how if you do decide that you want to untangle your tanglement and stay in the relationship um, because it is definitely your option if that is a deal breaker for you and you mm -hmm. don't want to stay with the person please get out of the relationship we are not That's encouraging a choice. <laughs> you to stay with anyone if fidelity is one of your deal breakers if that is one of your if loyalty and commitment is one of your core values, that is your decision to make whether you want to stay. But if that is broken, we, we support healthy relationships at the end of the day. That's all Jeannie and I care about. And so this is by no means encouraging entanglements or saying stay with entanglements. This is to help you if you do love your partner and you want to stay after entanglements have happened. And so um, I want to get your take on some of these. So number one, if an entanglement occurs and you decide that you want to stay, uh, the cheater has to be remorseful, right? It has to take uh, accountability immediately for their actions. Um, that's one of the things. What is your take on that? Agreed. I think that oftentimes, you know, couples do get stuck in this initial phase where the person can't acknowledge, you know, that what they did was wrong or mm -hmm can't just take ownership to that. It was, you know, a decision that they made. It's this constant deflection of, well, because of this. Mm -hmm. And if we get caught up in the reasons why you made that decision, if you still are justifying it, then the relationship is going to be stagnant. It's going to stay there discussing this affair. Um, or it's going to, any attempt, anytime you guys get into a fight or argument, this is going to pop up. The trust is never going to be rebuilt. So, yes, I totally agree that the person that you have to acknowledge that what you did was something that was regretful and something that you are not, you know, you, you're, you are committing to, to make better decisions for the relationship moving forward. You brought up that it's something that pops up, right? Because you're still going through the forgiveness and healing process. Mm -hmm. And so it is going to be sometimes a trigger when the person does something or they're maybe not meeting all of your terms of what you decided in your mind was going to be uh, the agreement of how you guys were going to rebuild. Um, one of the other tips is that like both parties 
have to reflect on the situation and the pitfalls of the relationship and both contribute to the healing process. It's not enough to just have these mandates of what they need to heal and forgive and stay with the person. The partner needs to show up still, I believe, doing the work of the marriage with, yes, their prerequisites in mind, but not getting to necessarily punish the person yeah. because you've decided to stay. So mm, trying to I, hurt your partner, in my opinion, is not healthy in order to make them feel what you are feeling to feel better. I agree that there does have to get, all relationships do have to get to a point of that if they are going to really heal and recover. But that the timeline in which the person who was um, cheated on uh, take like the, the, the length of time which they take to, to heal mm -hmm. is can't be dictated by the offender. And so if I'm still in a place where I, I'm asking questions or if I'm wondering, you know, where are you going? Or if I need to be able to talk about this and bring up and ask questions, um, if that space has to be free, freely explored in order for healing to genuinely take place. If the other person, if the offending partner puts, you know, a deadline or I can't deal with this any, any longer, or it's not, you know, it's, we're not going to get to that point. The person has to really walk out and go through their process to, be, to build the trust again. And then we can talk about how we can both be fulfilled again in this relationship. Agree with every single freaking thing that you said. Um, yes, because oftentimes when you do decide to stay, they do expect you to automatically, well, forgive me then. Like, don't bring this up anymore. Let it go. Let the past be the past. And that may not be therapeutic to the partner who the entanglement happened to or... What would what would you call the entanglee and the or the entangler? Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you call the partner of an entangler? <laughs> yeah, the person who was let me see the the partner the partner who entangled and the partner who didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna do the entanglement lingo. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have, to, we, have to, we have to come up with. Some but I agree with you as far as like not forcing the forgiveness like yes forgiveness will happen but i do think that you need to be fair to your partner um in that process right like there does need to be some boundaries laid out of like maybe we do need to exchange passcodes maybe i do need to um hear from you when you come home from work or more check-ins throughout the day maybe you know we do need to spend more quality time together to rebuild this you know love back maybe like whatever those stipulations may be if you really care about the person and working towards the healing process you may have to sacrifice some of your comforts or, you mm -hmm. know, in order to make them feel secure, if security is a priority for your marriage and rebuilding that. And, and, I agree. That, and that's why it's a really, um, people often just skip over the work of the, the entangler, right? Because you have to really decide that I'm committed to this and this is a decision. If you are kind of, you know, or you're still on the fence of it and you're still experiencing the thoughts and or insecurities or, un, you know, unmet needs, that caused you to cheat like this is not something to sign up for to yeah. you know, try to work through to rebuild this trust because you're going to have to take a lot of ish for a minute um and you have to and if, but if this is the person that you want to you know spend your life with then you have to really decide that this is worth it early on in the process why do you think that most people stay together after the entanglement like why do you think that, um, not most people, but why do you think that those who decide to stay, stay? I think really the ones who decide to stay is based on a strong friendship foundation. Like if you, if, if that, if the, if your connection with your person is, is not just purely based on romance and, um, I, your idea of marriage or, mm -hmm relationship and it's really based on who they are their that your shared values your the enjoying time together being able to laugh together and and the thought of not of, of losing that connection and not being able to have you know to have, find that again in someone else 
I think that is why people choose to stay for a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Other people choose to stay out of fear um, and insecurity and, uh, you know. A, they don't want to start over. <laughs> exactly. They don't think they can do any better, that everyone cheats. The next dude is just going to cheat on me. The next girl is just going to cheat on me. Like it's, it, you know, so it, I wouldn't put it in one category, but I'm saying if, if it's coming from someone who is seeking a healthy, uh, a healthy reconnection after um, the trust was broken, I think that's probably the, you know, the base that they start from. And I do think that a lot of people are hurt when it happens. And when you are hurt and you're making a decision from a place of pain, oftentimes you are going to decide like, okay, I can't take this. Getting rid of that partner may end the pain or staying may just continue to remind you of the pain. If you can't work through, or you guys don't have a game plan, a blueprint strategy on what you're going to do to heal. It's not enough to just stay. If you are going to stay in the relationship after an entanglement, you really do need to do the work to untangle. And so that is going to look like a relationship roadmap of, okay, well, these are our goals and this is where I would like our relationship to be. Give me your terms. Here are the terms that I'm going to show up with. Oftentimes we start, you know, like you mentioned earlier, um, blaming ourselves like, well, how did I add to this? Like, you know, why did he go and get an entanglement or, you know, why did she go and get an entanglement? There are certain things that could be more done. People think that it's just because you're not having sex in your relationship that people have. And that is far from the truth. That may be one of the hundred of reasons people do it, but that's not the only reason. And we oftentimes make ourselves feel better staying in the relationship afterwards by blaming ourselves versus I know how I showed up. This is how you showed up. This was not our agreement. And this is what we need to get back to us. We don't do enough of the work of how to get back to us and an even better rebooted, reprogrammed version. Agreed. I, yeah, I definitely feel like we can't just, it, it, it does have to become a shift to where it's not just the work of the person who, you know, who sought um, external, external affair, but it also has to be, you know, our work again, and we do have to be committed to create a, a new relationship that we're both um, finding, you know, enjoyment from. I, I'm, I, I don't support affairs, and I would absolutely probably at this point in my life um, hurt my husband if it happened, if an entanglement went down. But I can't say yes, that I, I can't say that I'm <laughs> 10 years from now, I'm not yet well. I don't know how I would handle it, but in 2020, I'm saying he would go missing. Um, but I do appreciate the fact that they have children and mm -hmm. having, you know, seen you growing up, even like entanglements happen, the fact that they did the work for their healing to stay together. And I don't think that it was like just for the kids, but I definitely think that it showed the kids conflict resolution. I think it showed the kids forgiveness. I think it showed them demonstrations of, um, working through something and showing them this like deep, deep love that can potentially conquer all, or at least that's the way they're painting. <laughs> they're, that's, that's, at least, that's at least what they're painting. That's the, that's the hope, know, right? they, they contacted their lawyers and the lawyers were like, it's going to cost you this much to get out. That, and Will and Jada good. were like, okay, bad marriage for life. <laughs> yes. You gonna, like she said, and I'm like, look, you're going to be in this side of the house with your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm trying to be as optimistic about uh, this as possible, <laughs> but look, I'm, 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 I appreciate it. And I appreciate the fact that it's like a topic that we're able to talk about and possibly, you know, help people with, um, because there are people who do want to work th you know, through things that have happened through their past and it is possible, but you both have to be willing to do the work. It's not enough to just want the relationship to work. You have to be willing exactly. to work. And yeah, there is just, a difference. Sometimes people think. Yeah, some people think I just I, I want to be happy. I mm -hmm. just or I, I just want us to be right, and it's it that we can't wish our way into a healthy, happy relationship. A we really have to be committed men. to be uncomfortable, to you know, to to, to have to be vulnerable, to have you know, to have these tough conversations and and make a commitment to show up differently. Absolutely.
Preach, my sister Jenny from the Black Eye. Jen, you have to let everybody know where they can find you, where they can get some of your fantastic, uh, fabulous therapy. You are my um, Wendy, my go-to. Um, Wendy from Billions, that was a reference to um, Wendy. Uh, yeah. My go-to. For, <laughs> I'm actually that. And I turn to you when I need to be calmed down. I'm like, this client is driving me crazy. No. Um, <laughs> let everybody know where they can find you, where they can get your services, and um, where they can follow you on social. Uh, yes, so you can go to my website, jenniferlaurencounseling.com, um, and my IG is the same, uh, Jennifer Lauren Counseling, and um, I'm taking some cues from Adi to try to be more active on there, so <laughs> you yeah. can. Yeah, it's been so nice to talk to you, Maddie. Thank you for having me on. I'm happy to have you on too. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Madi. And follow us at The Spicy Life. Go to thespicylife.com. Also download, click and subscribe. Share this episode with a friend that needs to get out of an entanglement and become untangled. Uh, and there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.